This is War Room Moments, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and most relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. War Room Moments is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board. Here's your host, Jason Miller. Hey, thank you for joining uh, today's episode of War Room Moments. My name is Jason Miller, the podcast host. Um, and today I got a pretty damn special guest on today. Um, and this is going to be a little bit of a different podcast than what you're used to um, here on War Room Moments. Um, there's a reason why we call it War Room Moments, and it's, it's uh, typically based around uh, war and business. But today we're going to talk about a little bit of different kind of war, and that is supporting our veterans. And today I have Brian Gibson on with us today, and I uh, had a a great pleasure of talking to him before we even started the show. He's got a great mission, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is that mission and how we can really support veterans um, going forward. Brian, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you. And I am so proud to be here. Awesome. Well, well, hey, tell the audience uh, just a little 30 second uh, clip about who you are, what your superpower is right in the in the world. And uh, then we'll take it from there. Okay, my 30 second sales pitch. I'm Brian Gibson. (laughs) I'm the founder and president of Project Die Hard. We are in veteran nonprofit organization with the mission to basically bring hope to our brothers and sisters. How do we do that? We're building facilities. We're building places where a veteran can come for a day, a week, a month, up to a year. Yeah, it's great. That's great. Obviously, I'm very connected in this community. Um, I'm a retired vet myself. 23 years in the army and uh you know so supporting veteran causes is huge to me and it's it's a soft spot i have and you know which brings us into that discussion of what are you seeing today because before this uh, uh, one of the first things we talked about is you saved a life yesterday that's freaking amazing. Right. So, um, and it was inadvertent, right? It was, it was an inadvertent save somebody's life. And, you know, what are you seeing? You're very close to this target all the time. Right. Um, and we have programs that we support and all these things too, but, but you're in it, living it every day. And what is it you're seeing um, that may be different from five years ago, 10 years ago, um, with current war veterans and things like that. Well, what I, what I am seeing and the whole reason I started this mission, I did 26 years in the United States army. I was a combat medic. Mm -hmm. Okay. I self-medicated with alcohol for the longest time. Uh, up into the point where it almost cost me my life. But God saved my life. And after many years of prayer and going, hey, what do I do now? I got a phone call from the wife of one of my brothers. We did three tours together. What do I do, Doc? What do I do? He's hanging in the garage. I said something better had to be done. Uh, yeah, uh, we have the 22 because that's the marketing thing, but the meetings I have all week long, we're up to about 37 every day of our brothers and sisters that are losing their fight to the demons. That's just way too much. Whether it be alcohol, drugs, just PTSD, not able to function in civilian world, right? 
how many employers are out there? Oh, I love vets because I get a tax break, but I can't hire them because they can't work here. What do you mean they can't work here? Well, they got that PTSD. Uh, don't give me that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yesterday I was on a Zoom call and this young lady joined in. Uh, she's actually helping us with an event we got coming up. And she goes, I've heard of you. And I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Means you're doing something right, right? And she goes, you saved one of my friend's lives. I was like, okay, how? She gave me his name and I was up on my computer on the other screen typing in our roster. And I'm like, we don't know that name. She goes, no, he's never kicked. He's never called you directly. He goes, but your social media platform, the messages of hope you put out, it actually caused him to get the help he needed. I was like, praise God, we're doing something right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But then I look back and say, okay, imagine if our facilities were up and running. How many more could we affect? Uh, I'm all for teamwork. I, I believe that veteran businesses and veteran nonprofits can work together. Right? I, I've, we've partnered with, uh, I'm, no, I'm sure you've heard of Maxwell Soaps. Mm -hmm. Right? Great guy. We partner with them. They're going to be a facility. They're going to supply the soap for our facilities. Nice. Okay. Uh, third day coffee. I know you heard it. Jose, I know you have. <laughs> right? Again, he's a, he's a supplier for our facilities. We want right. to work with veteran businesses. Mm -hmm. We don't want it free. We understand. Uh, I know you know of Ginger and David, really designs. They make great t-shirts, right? Mm -hmm. They do ours. You see how this teamwork works with veteran mm -hmm. businesses and veteran nonprofits? We're not asking it for free. People buy their products. It helps our mission. Yep, absolutely. And there's this, this kind of goes to that, that conversation of, Getting back to the community-based model of, you know, biz local businesses supporting local charities, right? Yeah. I just had this conversation yesterday uh, uh, with, uh, he, he runs a nonprofit, his name's Kyle, and he runs a nonprofit, he's a prior service guy, and they are 100% they're a for-profit company, but they give all their money away. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, the model makes no sense from a business perspective at all, but, um, but it's amazing what they're doing. And they've, they've partnered with all of these different charities and, and so on and so forth. So that's definitely somebody I need to connect you with um, for sure. Um, Cause they're doing such great work and you know, but what we've lacked, and some of this is cause and effect from the pandemic and all this different stuff, right, is, you know, getting back to local community supporting the local community, right? And, you know, Amazon took over the world and made it easy for everybody to do stuff online and all this kind of stuff, right? But, but the more we support our local community, the more they can support the local charity. 80 plus percent of charitable donations come from small businesses, not from big corporations. So in full agreement, are, are we on Amazon Smile? Yeah. And every quarter, do a, am I grateful for the $6 we get? Sure, why not? <laughs> right? Right. But like, as I say, a third day coffee, when you buy his coffee and you use PDH 22, right? That doesn't get us funding directly. 
as I said, we, we don't want everything for free. Mm-hmm. But when you use that code, our price to purchase coffee for our facilities goes down. Sure. So see, you're helping us saving money and you're helping a veteran-owned business grow. Mm-hmm. That's our model, working together. It's, hey, we, did, we got it. We're the nonprofit. We're the nonprofit. Uh, business model? I got people that tell me about business models, man. I, I'm just the guy that's beating the drum. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, the business side of it all, that's, it's important, right? I mm-hmm. mean, it is important, but what's more important is the cause, right? It is the, the cause. cause. It's, it's, it's getting the word out. Um, and, you know, that's why this episode is so much different than most episodes, because it's not really around the business aspect of it um, necessarily. Um, but, but it is about support, right? And it is about, you know, we're seeing it. We see it right here locally in Boulder where um, we self-fund one of our own programs. It's just like we, uh, on a Saturday, we will go around Boulder and, and try to find vets that are living on the street. And I will we'll snatch them up and we'll take, drive them up to the VA and, you know, drop them off there. It's not my, if, if you say you're a veteran, well, somebody will find out if you're not anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again, again, uh, I had a meeting the other day and this veteran politician, I won't mention names, mm-hmm. uh, this one person was like, hey, I can put you in contact with them. And we work with a couple other veteran organizations because teamwork makes the dream work, right? Yeah, and yeah. had a had a conversation. And was, do we really want to partner with this guy? And this, the one veteran organization is run by a patriot, not a veteran. He goes, I may have a problem because I know his history. I know he had some this and that. And I'm like, brother, he put on the uniform. He went into politics. That explains that portion of it. Mm-hmm. But this is a very influential person. So if we can get the contact, let's talk. Right. Uh, We're faith-based and scripture-led. Community Pay It Forward right now. And a winery out in Napa Valley is doing a fundraiser. You can find it on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Because we're faith-based and scripture-led, I'm getting a lot of hate emails how can you partner with a winery? Well, A, we're not drinking it. And B, no drugs or alcohol is allowed on our properties. But I'll be honest, I'm starting to respond to them. Well, I don't see your name on our donor list. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. And and not not to mention, right? Why is owning a winery a bad thing? It's not I, bad. again. Good, good Lord. The, the, didn't uh, didn't Jesus drink wine? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so there you go. I mean, <laughs> okay, yeah. Our brothers and sisters self medicate with alcohol uh, that dang. leads to drugs. Okay, I got this little book called the Bible. Read it every day, and it says never to put my brothers into temptation. Right. A veteran that comes to our property, I ain't got a drink problem. Well, you're right. You may not. But your brother or sister sitting next to you might. Right. So the easiest way we found is we don't allow it on our property. I'm not against it. Look, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I know. (laughs) No, I don't drink. Because when I have that one beer, my math skills go to hell. (laughs) (laughs) And I know where that leads, right? Right, So I just don't drink. I have nothing against people that do. Right. You know, if if you if you got to drink a bottle a fifth a day like I was doing, we want to talk about you might have a problem. (laughs) But there's nothing against having a beer at the end of a hard day. Right. Right. 
Well, and, you know, people want to support veteran causes with their businesses. And I, I've always said this, I'll work with pretty much anybody, as long as it's not immoral, or unethical, um, th those kind of standards. And that's, that's really the, that's always been my, always been my, I guess, compass, you know, is that. And because we can use, you know, money is a tool, right? That's what it is. That's what I think of money as. It's just a tool. And it's up to us to figure out how we want to use that tool, right? And a lot of these big machines, um, you probably remember the... Uh, I don't know if I should say it, but I will anyway. You probably remember the big wounded warrior debacle years ago. Um, oh, where, oh, yeah. Okay, you know. brother. My son is <laughs> my son is a wounded warrior. Yeah. IED rolled his vehicle, traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. When he got out, we called wounded warrior mm. because I'm like uh, I, I, you know. <laughs> And sorry, my wife's out doing something, but she tells the story better than me. But one of the first questions out of their mouth was, does he have all his limbs? And we're like, what does that matter? It's not a photo op. Mm. I will never use our brothers and sisters for the sympathy vote. I won't. Right. I've helped in the five years we've been doing, we've had well over 40 veterans. Well, how come I haven't seen them on social media? Because they said, I'm not willing to go on to social media and tell my story. Got it, brother. I'm glad we could help. Mm. I will never browbeat anybody we help to go on to social media and tell their story. I just won't do it. Because that's what's wrong out there. Everybody wants to use our brothers and sisters. They want to use them to get money, to get this. To... No, we're not here to use our brothers and sisters. We're here to help them. Right. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And yeah, I don't take a salary. I'm not against them. But if somebody can explain to me why the CEO of Paralyzed Veterans of America needs to make $720,000 a year in a salary, I'll be glad to listen, but I don't <laughs> think you're going to change my mind. All right. Yeah. Well, not going to change mine either on that one. <laughs> for sure. Because that's, yeah, that, that's a discussion for another time. Yeah, um, that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, for sure. Well, well, hey, you do, um, even though you, you run a nonprofit, it's still a business, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, the one thing I've used this podcast for is a venue to share business struggles with the audience that they don't then in turn have to turn around and deal with, right? And, you know, specifically, you run a nonprofit. So, what is your biggest struggle other than donations? Not that. Um, what is your biggest struggle that, that you think you could help somebody starting a nonprofit that you could guide them through that? Oh, okay. You mean the, uh, like the discussion I had with the foundation when we first started, what makes you think, what makes you think you can run a nonprofit? Ah, right. Okay. Right. First and foremost, if you're going to start a nonprofit, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> don't do it the way I did. Okay. Don't. <laughs> but I come from the school of hard knocks. I love taking a beating so I can learn from it. <laughs> Get your board together first and foremost. Get that core group of people around you that believe in the mission, believe in the vision. And I'm going to tell you right now, not all of them are going to hang around. But get that core people around you. That's, that's, that's a difficult part of starting a nonprofit. 
uh, let it be known that, look, I'm just the founder and president. I got smarter people around me that do things. And there's a reason for it. I'm just an old broke down army medic. But as I tell people, if you start a nonprofit, make sure you stick to your guns on it. My job is to make sure the integrity of Project Die Hard's mission stays what it is. A faith-based, scripture-led organization trying to bring hope to my brothers and sisters. We won't compromise from it. Uh, before show, we talked. We had that veteran that was very well to do. He was going to give a very large sum of money. And we were talking up until the point where he said we couldn't hand out a Bible. All I said was, I'll pray for you. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, as we like telling people, your donation is our ammunition to fight the war on veteran suicide. And if you don't think we're not fighting a war, let's look at the numbers. Our first facility, Forward Operating Base Rush, is named after Sergeant Courtney Rush of the United States Air Force. She lost her fight to the demons January 3rd, 2012. We will not let people forget that the war still goes on here at home. Yeah, for sure. Of course it does. Um, and I, I don't think it's not that people don't necessarily know it, um, but it's more of a, it's an awareness thing, right? And you got to keep it in front of people's face all the time, right? And, you know, we could get into the whole VA conversation and all that, but I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. Um, <laughs> it's, so. it's, it, it's not worth it. It's uh, there are, the VA is staffed by very good people right. that are overworked and they lose hope because right. of other things. Sure. That's a great way to, that's a great way to put it. It is. <laughs> Sure. It, it is. I mean, there are great solid people within the VA that want to help. That's mm -hmm. why they, that's why they work for the VA. Right. But then when the bureaucracy hits in and all these things come in, they're kind of stuck. That's right. why we don't take government money. Yeah. Because right. when we start taking government money, they get to come in and tell us this is a recognized therapy. This isn't, you got to do it this way. You can't do it that way. Look, have faith. I was an old army medic who better to take care of our brothers and sisters. Right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, well, Hey, how, how do people, where do people go to, uh, find you guys what's the best way that you want somebody that watches this the best way you want them to come find you projectdiehard.org that's our website we're on all the social medias we're on facebook instagram uh we're almost ready to go live on our linkedin page we need a few more followers on it so we can start doing live videos on there Good. But yeah, we're all over the place. Uh, find us. Become that monthly patron. $22 a month, 73 cents a day is what we're asking for. And I'll tell you right now, it doesn't go into my pocket. It doesn't go into my board's pocket. Right now, your $22 a month pays for the utilities at this 20 acres and 10,000 square foot building that was donated to our prop, to our mission. Do we have time to show that video I showed you? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Pull it up. Let's show them. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Project Die Hard would like to welcome you to Forward Operating Base Rush in beautiful McCand, Illinois. A luscious 20-acre piece of property with a 10,000-square-foot building that once remodeled will house up to 12 veterans 
and their families to help them get back on their feet. Folks, this is where your $22 a month is going. Right here in the corner, you're going to see where the Veterans Ranch will have a four-stall barn and provide equine therapy services to veterans and families staying at Forward Operating Base Rush. Around the pond, there will also be a playground, a generic classroom, a gym, and a pavilion where you can just relax and enjoy the beautiful scenery. Behind the pond are trails. There will be a retreat center that can hold up to 24 people for a weekend event. So if you would like to bring your veteran nonprofit out to Forward Operating Base Rush, we just ask that you do not charge the folks staying here for any services that you provide. Here's another beautiful overview of what you'll see when you come in to Forward Operating Base Rush. Whether you want to ride some horses, drop a line into the pond and catch some bass and bluegill, or just relax under the pavilion and enjoy the scenery and alleviate some stress that you might be having in your life, Project Die Hard and Forward Operating Base Rush are here to provide those services for you and will be here as long as you need. We thank you for your time. God bless. Awesome. Great mission, brother. I appreciate you and all that you're doing for our brothers and sisters. Um, you know, God bless you, my friend. Uh, I, again, all I can say is thank you, brother. And that's, that, that's when people help us, that's all I can say is thank you and God bless. Because yeah. Whether you give $22 a month and your buddy gives 22000 I never know what you give. Right, right, right. Well, hey, uh, definitely connect with me on, uh, uh, you have my email, send me yeah. some stuff so I can put it out in my networks and all that good stuff. Here to support you, brother, 100%. Had no idea you were trying to talk to me for two years. Hey, um, hey again. And, uh, <laughs> Again, all all good things come in time. Yeah, true. When 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 we started talking with Will Black, right, who was joining the team and who was joining this fight, again, Will Black, thank you. God bless you, man. Right. Uh, he said, dude, him, yeah, yeah. He goes, I got an in. I said, thank you. But yeah, brother. <laughs> Teamwork awesome. makes the dream work. And Absolutely. if we all work together, we're going to be able to bring that number down. Yeah. Thank you for awesome. your time. And patience. Of course. Again, send me a bunch of stuff so I can get it all over the place and help support your mission. Cause we have the same mission, my friend. Uh, they're, 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 they're just working in parallel a little bit differently. That's all. <laughs> so, well, again, Everybody has their piece of the pie. That's right. You got if it. everybody came together, we would all eat well. Yes, that is very true. That's a good way to look at it. Well, hey, Brian, thanks again for being here. Appreciate you being on the show. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking soon for sure. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Well, hey, thank you for joining this episode of War Room Moments. Uh, again, dream it, believe it, achieve it. Go support Brian's mission. Um, Brian's mission's my mission. Um, and it's Jace Miller, your podcast host, signing off. Thanks for listening to War Room Moments with your host, Jason Miller. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.